Hello, my name is Raven Manuel, and I want to share five things you should know and that matter when organizing a carpentry's workshop. But first, who am I? I am the senior application developer for the National Museum of African American History and Culture, a unit within the Smithsonian Institution located in Washington, D.C. I became a certified carpentries instructor a few months into the pandemic, so my workshop experience has primarily been teaching online. But the tidbits I will share should be applicable with maybe a few tweaks, depending on the modality. Recently, I completed the training to become a maintainer, so now I am and serve as a maintainer for the library carpentries, the GET lessons. These five recommendations I will share are ways of working that I found successfully run workshops have in common. These are things I've noted when I've been an instructor, a helper, or a learner. Success being defined as a workshop receiving overwhelming positive learner feedback and workshop teams who appear to have a streamlined process for managing learner challenges, which minimally impact the flow of the workshop. Now you may find that what I suggest is an organic approach or common sense and have been incorporating them in your own process. So I hope knowing that your methodology is followed by others, affirms and encourages you. Okay, moving on. Let me share the five things that matter and you should know to organize an effective workshop. Number one, all voices matter. When you sign up to assist with a workshop, you probably have an idea of the role you'd like to play whether it be instructor or helper. Regardless of your role, your experience matters and suggestions and observations of things that you've noticed work well should be shared with and welcomed by the workshop team. Number two, meetups matter. There needs to be at least one workshop kickoff meetup planned for at least two weeks out from day one of the workshop. It should be attended by the hosts, all instructors, all helpers, and anyone who will be coordinating or assisting people, places, or things before, during, and after the event. The purpose of the meetup is not only for making introductions, but also to ensure there's a shared understanding of who does what and the tasks to be completed pre and post workshop. Number three, checklists matter. Again, regardless of your role, draft a checklist of information you need to know to be effective, but also common tasks that you feel need to be addressed or confirmed. Assumptions are the downfall of even the most well-planned workshops, so assume nothing. For instance, the workshop's website. Where will it be hosted and whose contact information should be posted? What tools, Slack, Discord, Zoom chat, Etherpad will be used during the workshop, by whom, and who will be monitoring for questions and comments throughout. And something as basic as what time zone are you working in? Something I've actually took for granted because doesn't everyone work on East Coast time? Number four, setting expectations matter. Pick someone who will act as the workshop MC and who will be responsible for making opening and closing remarks, introducing instructors and helpers, reviewing the overall workshop flow, and providing operational instructions. Instructors should introduce themselves when appropriate, provide a brief overview of the flow of their lesson, where lesson learners can find the lesson materials, and when learners should expect breaks. Number five, your emotional well-being matters, so relax even if a number of unexpected annoyances need to be managed throughout the workshop you can be a hundred percent certain that these annoyances will cause no small wars or skirmishes between any country or governments i hope that you found these observations useful and that at least one of them will be helpful the next time you are responsible for organizing a carpentry's workshop thank you